this edition of Stories of the Afterlife. In this quarter, we're talking about soul groups and soul mates. First of all, I'd like to thank you for being our subscribers. Uh, it's you being part of this with us every quarter that allows our research journal to prosper and grow as we spread more of our stories around the world about the potential of life between lives work. Thank you for your support for the Michael Newton Institute. You know, when Michael started his work many, many years ago, there was a really strong structure around soul groups and soul mates as well. What I've found in recent times is that it's not so much who's in your soul group, but it's what you do with those connections while you're here in human form. We may have these wonderful connections that take us across different times, different lives, etc. And it's great to have a learning buddy or a number of them as we move through physical form. But what I've found is that it's more about the energy of the soul contracts themselves. What is the interaction and the exchange that you will have with that person during this lifetime as you move through that contract together? Where are your opportunities for free will? And what can you do differently perhaps in this life that might be different from the roles that you've played for each other uh, in other lifetimes? So when you start to find ways in which you can exercise your free will for the joint learning of the two of you, there is the most beautiful energetic exchange as you start to remember more and more of your magnificence as the immortal souls that you are. So when I first started this work, a lot of people were interested in who's in my soul group, who are my buddies, and we found that that was really just validation for those people. And they would come back into a waking state and they would say to me, I always knew that they were in my soul group, or I felt that they were. And it acted more as validation. And all of that is wonderful and interesting, but what do you do with that? You just move through life with that validation. Or do you move through a deeper insight that might come from, well, that person's in my soul group, that's a surprise. That's the person that I've never gotten on with in this life, and now I understand there's a pattern that transcends lifetimes, and we're here to learn together. Tolerance, acceptance, that love transcends all of these types of energies. That can be a real learning out of soul groups and, and soul mates that you come into it with. So, you know, it's that energetic exchange and I really want to encourage that train of thought. What is this soul contract trying to teach me? Who is this soul that's in my life for, for, for exchange of love, for exploring some of the difficult energies like fear, uh, power, whatever that may be, all of these are sacred contracts. You know, I like to think of humanity as one big soul contract. You know, we're all here together to change the world and to awaken the consciousness. We've got a soul group of 8 billion people who have chosen to be here in these times. What that says to me is that there are many, many courageous souls in this universe. And we are here and we are finding our ways to work together to bring a new energy to this earth. Michael's work was first and foremost about an awakening of humanity. And we are so lucky, fortunate, blessed to be able to take his work forward to the next level and expand it further. But our role is to put that all out into humanity and to start to bring these themes through. We are one soul group of 8 billion people and we are part of a greater universe as well. So soul groups are really important. A word on soulmates. There are those souls, as we know, that have strong connections with us for each lifetime. We may see it as a romantic partner. We may see it as a best friend. It may be a, uh, a collaborator in our journey together. And it might be something that is very powerful and very known. Perhaps there's a few different soul groups uh, members who you've moved through with over different lifetimes, primary soulmates, Michael referred to them. I've found that it's often a, a, a handful. There's maybe two or even three that you might see as, as more primary energies. And we have this, uh, this idea, of course, of romantic love in human form. But there's another kind of love. There's an unconditional love that we experience in spirit and in the spiritual realm that transcends anything that we can encapsulate here in human form. Everybody wants to be in love or to have a loving uh, companion, whatever that may be, and all of that is beautiful to share the journey with. But our real role in love on this planet, I feel, 
is for us to bring through the unconditional love of spirit and to spread it around this planet. To make what we do there evident here, for us to express to people uh, unconditional love in ways that allow us to echo those beautiful themes in spirit. If we can show unconditional love for each other here, there'll be no war. There'll be no separation. And the world has moved a lot into separation in recent times. Nobody incarnated here to be deliberately separate, but they may have incarnated here to experience separation, be it political views, cultural, whatever it might be. All of these different uh, separation things are just an illusion here for humanity. We are one soul group of eight billion. If you can find um, a loving companion in this lifetime, then that's beautiful. That too is a wonderful soul contract. And I want to send you all of the best um, from my place here in the bush. Uh, I want to ask you to bring that love through from spirit in its unconditional form as much as you can because the world needs that from you right now. We all need to step into our unconditional love for each other and the oneness of humanity as we move through this expansion of consciousness together. I look forward to seeing you next time.